Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media. I'm Grant Abbott and today we're working on our Deadpool Funko Pop character. In this session we'll be working on the clothing or basically the belt and harnesses. Do remember to check out the links in the description for other useful playlists from my channel and the links to my character course which takes you from nothing right through to a game ready character with rigging animation ready for a game engine. Okay so here's where we got up to last time and I need to change the shape of the hand really slightly. So I'm going to click on my model Go into edit mode and just select this area here and press full stop or period key on my numpad. And the way I've built this is to extrude out and then extrude out this way. But the topology didn't really work for the rig when I was testing it. So I do need to make a few changes. So I'm going to make a cut here and here to add some vertices to this so it deforms a bit better. That's fairly straightforward. I can press control R and just cut around here like this and into that spot and then another cut in here. Before I do that, if I press two to go to edge mode and select this edge here and press control X to dissolve it. And there's one here as well, control X and dissolve that. Now I'm ready to go down this path much easier. So K for knife tool, cut here. It's a little bit tricky to find because you're looking for the low poly version, but that's fine, it's easy enough. And just come around here like this and back up to this one and press enter. Now we've still got quads, but we've just got an extra loop cut around there, which will help us when it comes to rigging and the deformation. So just a bit of editing, this edge here, I think just needs a bit more shape and I'll select the end face, control plus to grow my selection up the thumb and let's just modify the shape. I need to bring it down really slightly like this. So rotate like this and then G to grab and that will help out a lot. Lastly, this face can move up really slightly and this down very slightly. I'm going to edge slide this up really slightly as well. Okay, so we've got a better looking thumb there that will deform a bit nicer. I'm using the Rigify rig, so when I set this up, I won't have too much weight painting to do and I'll be able to make a fist for holding the swords much easier. Okay, so you'll need to make that edit. The other thing you'll want to add will be uh, things like the belt and kind of straps around the knees and wrist. So the simplest way to do that, in my opinion, is to actually grab a face loop. So Alt left click, sorry, in face mode, three to go to face mode, Alt left click on one of these, and we can actually use that as the strap. So I'll turn off the auto merge so it doesn't cause any issues when I do this. Shift D and then scale and just scale it up. And there we've got a simple wrist strap that follows the shape of his wrist nicely. You might want to edit the shape very slightly. So maybe this vertex in here, just move that out slightly and tidy it up a bit. And maybe these two want to be a bit wider. So somewhere around there, that's absolutely fine. Obviously that's appeared on the other side because we've still got our mirror. I'll go to face mode and press L over that. So that will select the linked object because it's not actually joined as such to the other object. It is part of the same object, but it's not joined through vertices. So I can press L over that to select it. And then P to separate. So by selection, loose parts would work here as well. Once I've done that, I still want to keep the mirror and the subdivision surface modifier, but I also want to add a solidify. And then I can bring this up. And I've made a mistake because I'm actually solidifying the body and not those wrists. So let's undo that. I'll just close that to get rid of it. Into object mode, then select the wristbands. And now I can add the solidify modifier. There we go. And let's just scroll down to the solidify. There it is. In fact, let's minimize the mirror and the subdivision surface so you can see where it is. So it's solidify after the subdivision surface. So we'll have a bit of an edge around here. That shouldn't matter too much. Let's just have a look what that looks like. So coming right in to somewhere around there. And that looks okay. Now, if I bring this up, so bring it before the subdivision surface modifier, it's doing that solidify and then adding the subdivision surface modifier. Now I think it's a recent thing, but you can actually crease the inner and outer to sort of give it a bit more solidity. It's a bit like adding a mean crease to these edges, and that's certainly helping us there. Now it's much easier to edit our shape. So if I go into edit mode and maybe select this edge loop here, if I want to make it maybe a bit thicker, I can press G to grab, maybe scale it up a touch, and we've got a thicker wristband there. And in fact, I feel like the whole thing needs to come down, so I can press G to grab pull it down and maybe just scale it in slightly. Although my object center is in the middle there and that's affecting the mirror slightly. So what I'm going to do is right click, 
set origin to geometry and that brings the mirror on top but if I go to my mirror now and choose the mirror object as my body that will push it to the other side now I can scale it up and down as I see fit okay same thing for the feet select a face loop shift D to duplicate scale it up make a few adjustments that's good alt A to deselect face mode L to select those linked objects, P to separate by selection, and we've got a separate object. Remember to go into object mode and then select the new object. Now we can add a solidify. And again, we'll put that before the subdivision surface modifier. We'll change the thickness and we'll use this outer and inner crease. So just bring that up to add a bit more thickness. And that looks good. Lots of people ask me about separate objects for clothing. That's absolutely fine. As long as it has the same weight painting as the faces underneath it, it should deform in exactly the same way. Just make any minor adjustments. Now we might want a gun belt, so let's click on the body, face mode. I'll probably choose this one, Shift D, scale, and G to grab in the Z and bring that down. I think that will look a bit better. Just need to adapt the shape around his bum a bit. I'll press P to separate first, and then go into it, and then just adapt the shape. Okay, just a quick look at some reference images. You can see a Deadpool sort of circle there, so we can easily make that, and one there as well, and a few of the comics, which all look quite cool. So we'll try and mimic those. We'll do those bits as separate objects. So back to object mode and add the solidify modifier, put it above the subdivision surface, give it a bit more thickness, and then increase the outer and inner crease. Shift right click, Shift A to add, and then add a cylinder. I'll reduce the amount of faces to 20. Let's scale this right down. Rotate around the X 90 degrees. Scale in the Y. So something around there, I would say. Let's go to edit mode now. Select this face. I to inset. E to extrude. And we're seeing a bit of the belt there, so I'll have to pull it out a bit more. So GG to edge slide, and we'll just pull it out to about there. That's fine. And there's a kind of line down the middle. Probably the easiest way is to join these up, bring them in, and add a bit of thickness there. So I'll isolate this shape with forward slash on my numpad, go to vertex mode. In fact, it'll be much easier with a mirror, so I'll use my auto mirror tool. So under the edit menu, auto mirror in the X axis, and you can see the auto mirror coming down there. I'll just grab these two, GG to edge slide, and GG to edge slide, and then I will select this vertex and this vertex, and press J to join. You can't press F to fill because there's already a face there. I'll just move this one in a little bit more and then I'll go to face mode, delete these faces and grab that edge and that edge and F to fill and then this edge and press fill and then we've got that pattern there. Forward slash on my numpad to come out of that and into object mode. Let's just have a quick look around and make sure that looks all right. I might go to Material preview mode and just up the ambient occlusion so I can see that nice and easily. Move my 3D cursor as well. Yep, that's looking fine. Okay, maybe some packs as well. So shift A to add, mesh cube, scale that right down. And for the packs, it's probably best to add a subdivision surface modifier, but when I add this, you'll see that it goes all squished like this. I'll just turn the viewport up slightly. So it's got two subdivisions there. So we need some supporting loops. Probably the easiest way is just to add a bevel with it's a cube like this, but make sure that it bevels above the subdivision surface modifier. And then you get this nice looking thing like this. You can change the offset as to how much that's affecting it. Before doing that, I'd press Control A and just apply your scale because that's gonna matter a great deal to the bevel, which is making much more sense at 0 0.001. So that's about a centimeter. Just adding a couple of those. And lastly, add modifier, mirror modifier, and choose the main object as our mirror. I can select this one, shift select that one, control L, and link the modifiers. So it's got the same modifier as this one. Okay, that should give you enough information now to make any interesting edits, maybe a gun with a thigh strap there or something like that. I'll leave that up to you.
Okay, so hopefully this is all helpful. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.